Please welcome Principal Secretary, State Department for Basic Education, Dr. Belio Kipsang. Asante Nisana, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, all of us here in. I would want to take this early opportunity to apologize for arriving late this afternoon, this morning. It coincided with another meeting that we had with the leadership from the northern part of this country where we were also discussing issues, education and interventions that we all require to ensure as we are here today an inclusive education in our country. So once again, I would want to apologize for the delay and being late in the morning. Once again, I would also want to acknowledge the panelists that I found or those who are here when I arrived. Appreciate the engagement and the discussions that they brought out and the areas that requires all of us to bring out so that we have an inclusive education. I would also want to convey the greetings of the Cabinet Secretary who is out of the country on official duty. So once again, Asanteni and thank you Kise for bringing us together in this expo so that we can be able to appreciate technologies, to appreciate all that is there that is making it easier for all of us to be able to engage in an inclusive environment and ensuring also that we give equal opportunity to each of our children in acquiring education and ensuring that we live to the spirit of what the president said when he was in this institution about giving everybody an equal chance, an equal opportunity and ensuring that we carry all of us on as we move forward as a country. Personally, I feel happy to have been associated and be part of the journey of modernizing this institution so that we are able to give an equal opportunity to all our children. The conceptualization of this institution in 2013-2014 all the way to 2015 when we started this modern facility on assessment and research. Also, as we move forward to make it more easier for all of us and for our parents to be able to move forward with their children with disability and challenges. And therefore, the construction of our parental center that will be able to assist and to ensure that our parents are comfortable when they bring their children to be supported by this institution. And also move forward on effecting the directive of the president of having a production center that will be producing and assembling assistive devices. So we feel honored that we have been part of this journey. So once again, the chair of this institution, the management of this institution, my colleagues from government, all other organizations that assist us in sponsorship, both of this expo, and the work that this institution is doing, our invited to. So today, as we are in this expo, we say thank you to all of us that in one way or the other have assisted us to have these particular devices. So once again, we are gathered here today for a profound and historic event that celebrates possibilities and demonstrates our shared dedication to a system of education that truly impresses every one of us, that which brings us together and that which ensures that we have an inclusive environment. As we look at this remarkable gathering today, I'm deeply moved by the presence of so many dedicated individuals, manufacturers, as already said, innovators, distributors of education, educational materials, and other materials that support all of us in uniting ourselves for a purpose of moving forward. Your commitment to advancing accessible and inclusive education 
is inspiring, I want to extend our heartfelt appreciation to you individually and collectively. Today, we are turning dreams into reality for countless individuals who deserve every opportunity to shine and to move forward. This expo represents a significant turning point in our efforts in establishing inclusive learning environment and not merely making it look like an event. This goes beyond what we are looking at sometimes as events, but as a journey that we have all started. Once again, as we begin in this momentous occasion, the first of its kind in our region, we are committing to a vision in which every individual, regardless of their abilities, has access to tools and resources that are required to realize the great potential that we have. Um, I was very happy about what our colleague from Kenya Institute for Special Education demonstrated to us. And I said, every tool that we carry is an assistive device. Because each telephone, other than being a telephone, is an assistive device to him as an individual. And he did tell us that uh, it moves us from disability to impairment. And you know, sometimes when we walk around with our phones, we don't realize what that phone can turn into if situations of our lives change. Today, we know it for sending messages. Today, we know it for calling. Today, we know it for taking photos. But our brother who teaches here knows it for a totally different use. And therefore, we all need to acknowledge and appreciate every other thing that we carry around so that we don't look at it as a tool of luxury, but that it is an essential tool for all of us. Ladies and gentlemen, the World Health Organization identifies assistive technology as a crucial mediator of human rights. Assistive technology is not only a tool, but also a bridge to possibilities that we, that were once out of reach for so many of us. It encourages inclusion and assures that everyone has a seat at the table of opportunities. Again, in our educational institutions, we are witnessing a transformation starting with this institution. When the president did direct us and assigned us resources to start the assistive device production unit, it is part of that inclusion. It is part of that journey. I totally agree with the chair in what they are doing as an institution in giving each one of us an equal opportunity. And I totally agree with them that as we go into the new funding model, as we go into the funding of our higher education, that we have to create an equal opportunity. Yes, it is right for all of us to get loans. It is right for all of us to get that which we are getting. But again, as you already said, we don't want to give a double disadvantage to persons living with disability. So if we get opportunities of transiting some of the financing that we give in loans into grants, then we are giving them an head start as they move forward. So once again, Chairman, thank you very much for what you are doing for our young people. So once again, assistive technologies are breaking down barriers and creating pathways for our students to acquire the skills they need and live an enriched life. This expo provides a vital platform 
for showcasing these advances, for fostering innovation, and for creating connections that will drive progress in accessibility and inclusion, both in education and in life. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm informed that the objectives of this expo included showcasing innovations and celebrating the incredible advances that we have had as a country and as a society in ensuring that we provide solutions that makes it easy for us to move together as a community and as a people. That we are using this as a user exposure so that we provide an opportunity of engaging directly with these particular technologies. Again, it is critical for all of us to build partnerships because it is out of these partnerships that we shall be able to move forward together as a society. It gives us an opportunity for collaboration that ensures that our efforts are, sustain, are sustainable and impactful to our country. It is worth to note that under the directive of the president, as I've already mentioned, the government has put in place plans and actualized commitments by providing necessary, necessary resources so that we, as an institution, KISE, can be able to put up this particular assistive device production unit and a factory that will make it one cheaper and easier for all of us to access these critical assistive technologies that will make us move forward. As ministry, as ministry and having been part of the journey of ensuring that we have an inclusive education, we have now consolidated all resources and resources that are required to ensure that assistive devices are available to our kids. We've been sending resources to our institutions, to our schools. Sometimes you get a school with 15 children. So even if you send them the small amounts that we send, they may not be able to consolidate that resource to be able to acquire the necessary assistive devices. So what we have decided as part of our policy in government and in the ministry is that going forward, as we send resources to KICD to acquire textbooks and other resources, we shall also be sending resources to, K to KISE so that they can be able to take advantage of economies of scale and acquire critical assistive devices for our children. And I want to report that uh, this week, I did request the procurement regulator to allow me to transfer the procurement authority as an accounting officer to the CEO of this institution. And yesterday I got that authority. And therefore, going forward, because this institution have capacity to be able to identify what is required more than we could do in the Ministry of Education, then we shall transfer the resources and transfer authority to procure to this institution so that we can be able to get the right technologies, the right quality, and being medical devices, then the people who appreciate and understand then will be doing it going forward. So once again, I want to believe that the management of this institution will be able to put those resources into proper use and that we shall ensure that our children benefit from what we shall be transferring to this institution. So once again, this factory serves as a beacon of hope and a symbol of our promise to enhance access and inclusivity in our education system. We look forward into a future where every child with special needs in Kenya and beyond has access 
to high quality and affordable assistive devices. This will open for local innovation, job creation, and a more inclusive education environment. This factory will not only produce vital resources, but also leverage the success of Kise on pool procurement, a model that will for sure will reduce on costs and consolidate on economies of scale. Finally, we anticipate this expo will lead to improved access of the devices. It will also enhance collaboration. It will optimize production and distribution of devices and also advance inclusive education. Our goal is to harness advanced assistive technology to promote inclusive education across Africa. This is about a practical solution of making tangible Im impact on the lives of every Kenyan and giving equal opportunity to every child. The ministry has already reviewed its approach towards providing assistive devices, as I've already said, and ensured that we transfer the necessary resources to this institution. As I conclude, I want to reaffirm government's commitment to promoting inclusive education. This, I would want once again, that as we continue to implement competence-based education, that we shall ensure that we nurture the potential of every learner. And when I say every learner, it is every learner by the word. And that is why we are moving forward on the question of inclusive education. Once again, we are dedicated to ensuring that every individual with special needs has access to resources that they require. I urge all of us to take an active part in, conversion, in conversation that look into creative solutions that will establish collaborations and ensure that we have a common goal and a clarity of purpose when it comes to inclusive education. Together, let's build a future where specialized learning materials, assistive devices, assistive technologies are not just available, but transformative. Once again, I would want to also say that we shall continue to ensure that we consolidate data that will be able to make sure that we reach every child. We are re-engineering the National Education Management Information System, NEMIS, and we are transiting it from NEMIS to Kenya Management Information System that will be able to be more robust, to be able to follow our child from ECD through primary school through junior school, our secondary school, tertiary education, into our universities, and even be able to follow them in the job market and appreciate what they are doing for this country. And critically also, to be able to have a component that will be able to adequately follow and capture our children with special needs. So that every time, just like the chair said, is that we shall not be speculative in numbers. We shall be specific and be able to know the diversity of our learners in terms of numbers, in terms of what they require, and in terms of the projections into the future. Once again, thank you for your dedication, your passion, your commitment in making a difference in the lives of our children. Together, we are celebrating possibilities and creating a brighter future for all of us. Once again, notwithstanding being late, it is my humble commitment and duty to officially say that this two-day expo is open and urge all of us that we are available to make sure that we acknowledge and appreciate what we are able to do as people of this country and international partners who are with us. 
Thank you very much.